So, Danny, episode one of the of season one of the podcast. Are you nervous for your first interview? Nervous, not the word. Excited is the word. You know, I'm finally here, finally about to do this. Now, I can't believe this motherfucker is about 20 minutes late, but it's what you get, right? You you hired a you you get a Peruvian to do your first podcast. Expect him to be late. Oh, He's getting back at you for the times that you were late. Me late, never. Hey, Tifo. There he is, guest number one. <laughs> but I think we passed that stage of like taking off our shirts uh, many, many years ago. <laughs> Maybe not you with your sleeveless today, but... Uh, sleeveless all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like definitely past uh, taking off uh, my shirt and uh, love yourself. And it's okay to love yourself. Mm. All right, here we go. We're here. We're our first guest for this podcast, this new podcast. I'm trying this, probably be the last show. But <laughs> anyways, um, when I started this, I'm like thinking who could be, who should be my first guest because when, um, whenever I started something, at least that went well, I uh, did it with this guy. So started uh, working out for the first time with you <laughs> and uh, did pretty well in that. Very happy to have done that. Later on, we started our fitness company together, and that did awesome too. So I'm saying, if I'm gonna undertake a new challenge, there's nobody else that I wanted uh, to share the moment with, at least oh. the first time with you. So I'm hoping we strike gold once again. So yeah. here it is, uh, Alex Tifo, one of my best friends, known each other our whole lives. You were born, and a few months later, I was born, and since then we've always been close uh and yeah so uh over the years many many experiences uh, lots of fun and uh, i think um we should share this with the with the world oh this i like that <laughs> this well, I, I, I brought you a little gift to commemorate the oh the already first, uh, yeah Look of course <laughs> Uh, Am I, uh, I have a collection of bobbleheads at home Look at and that. Uh, i really wanted okay. to select a bobblehead that i felt uh, embodied or disembodied <laughs> in uh, Deadpool's case, you, uh, Danny Ugaldez, who uh, one of your choice. superpowers is to uh, reconstruct yourself. All right, that's one of your superpowers. Also, one of your superpowers, but not really a superpower, is your humor, which is a bit of a... <laughs> An annoyance. Uh, well, no, yeah. it's like a <laughs> kind of humor. Uh, but, you know, some people get it, some people don't. And uh, through the years, I think I've learned and love to to get it uh so yeah deadpool well, uh, thanks a lot you I, are deadpool i, I, I love deadpool i like the movies it was great uh okay so listen i want to share this experience with the world like i said to get people to know you better um so first of all um let's fast forward to our childhood all that that was fun but that was done so what was it that first wanted to make you work out I or get think, in shape. Uh, truly, when I think about it, it's um, one of my family members, one of my oh. uncles who was. Uh, uh, I still remember pictures of him as a young bodybuilder, and seeing him, uh, you know, through the years, working out, nice. having a you know uh, dumbbells, having cables, having bars in his basement, and then being a young. A boy very curious about what was happening there and what he was doing and i felt uh i felt uh, a certain kind of uh, allure i guess or it had a mystique when i was a child and then as i grew older um you know there were so many things and so many moments and ist instances that really made me do mm, what right. i do so he was kind of an idol like uh, yeah a little yeah. bit okay definitely cool, an cool. inspiration for sure you know? nice 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 yeah. nice and uh, I mean, watching, uh, let's say, uh, Pumping Iron at uh, 16 years old um, was definitely a, 
eye-opening experience. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, and then watching it again was another one, and then watching it again. <laughs> so um, really, um, there were some moments definitely that inspired me to do to do this uh Nice. Every day, make it part of your life. Yeah, exactly. we, we've been doing it like what? Uh, we're forty-four years old now. Yeah. Uh, it's been like at least twenty, if not more, yeah. years. So, exactly. So yeah. So how did you get started? How did I know when we got started? But how did you start it the first time? Yeah, so uh, as um, maybe fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, I was playing football, and they had uh, the kids go into the gym, and uh, you know lift some weights. <laughs> um, with a coach, so there was a okay. coach that was able to teach us mostly uh, powerlifting, speed, explosion. Oh, so you did have a coach at that Yeah, point. we did have a coach That's that kind of showed us. That's why you're always lifting and being stronger than me. I always wondered, yeah. like, uh, we started at the oh, same yeah. time. and <laughs> Yeah, well, th they had us doing, uh, you know, we were doing bicep curls in those days. It was yeah. uh, mostly uh, squats, uh, uh, deadlifts, bench press, and then Functional clean and exercise. jerk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, like, uh, power lifting and, like, because everything that we did on the field required a lot of uh, power and a lot of explosion and a lot of speed. Okay. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where it kind of began. But then uh, there were moments after that where it wasn't uh, really uh, something that I was pursuing or something that I was really interested in uh i think really until we started going to the gym together yeah and then something clicked and something happened i think uh maybe more so in my mind than in my body and then okay. i was like really loving you know it's funny because as i was like thinking of, of things we can talk about today uh obviously fitness is, is the center part piece of our <laughs> friendship it seems so like I was thinking, I go like, I don't remember why, but for some reason, uh, when uh, one day I, I woke up and I go like, oh, I, maybe I should ask Tifo to come do the, the, the um, uh, to go train with me because I wouldn't go alone. I don't know yeah. what back then. And then I just happened to run into you, I think at a bus stop or something. And maybe. then I said like, yeah, I said like, hey, you want to work out? And then you're like, yeah, fuck, I'm in a hundred percent. So, yeah, yeah. and then like, the rest is history. Like, I mean, sometimes we stopped and whatever, got injured. We, yeah, yeah. We didn't know much what we were doing. At least I didn't. <laughs> but we were uh, pretty consistent. In yeah, 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 yeah. And we were strong, man. Yeah. I, I think of heavy lifts I do now. I used to do them maybe not the right way, but I used to lift maybe more at, what was it, 20 years old, 21 years old? It was also age and yeah. the consideration <laughs> there, you know. So we were younger, much more vigorous. Yeah competitive uh, like you know if yeah. he lives more than me i'm gonna try to beat him whatever now i you know couldn't care less now we, we work smarter now i think but exactly. uh, yeah that that's what what it was so i guess it was fate somehow that we ended up doing this yeah possibly yeah. i yeah. think w we would always cross paths uh, in many many instances but yeah like uh, crossing path and then sharing that love for working out i think yeah that really make it made it uh yeah. that we got closer even because exactly. we would see each other for hockey yeah recreational activities like going out maybe that yeah. but something like on a day-to-day -day basis i think that was yeah and i still catalyst. i still remember like uh it was snowing we would go yeah it was no raining what. it would go it was sunny we would go do you remember waiting for me at the corner for like yeah, yeah uh, of course <laughs> yeah but I, I don't remember because i think i got smart after like the second time yeah. we were late so i'm like <laughs> You say 3.30, we'll meet at the corner, I'll be there at 3.45, he'll be five minutes late, you know, so I, I really understood, uh, you know, and then also I would just maybe just go to your house sometimes and be like, okay, I'll yeah, just pick yeah, him yeah. up there and then we'll <laughs> go directly, you know, waiting at a corner seemed a little bit uh, it's easier. weird and like... Uh, <laughs> boring a bit to, to yeah, be especially there. if we're going at night you know it's like what is this guy doing in the corner huh? <laughs> especially the area where we lived it was like ah it's a little bit uh, yeah it was a little sketchy too like, yeah uh, yeah but it was so much fun it was so sad to hear like because uh, that place had meaning for me uh, that when it closed yes. fit for life um, yeah. uh we were like kids when we started going yeah. there and and the owners uh fabio and max were always super nice with us and uh, very nice yeah and you know like because of this damn COVID thing, I don't know, I just passed by one day and I saw something Close, was yeah. written and it was like, thank yeah. you for all the years, but we're out. So like, it really did something. I was like, fuck, I, I wish, like, I was always thinking, I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell Alex, let's go for a workout. But um, 
Yeah, yeah I, I did. Know. I did go back uh, many years uh, later ah, yeah? to work out. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. I yeah, nice. I always felt uh, a kind of uh, obviously a nostalgia, but obviously yeah. like a uh, man. The dudes that worked out there were fucking yeah, good dudes, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. Uh, big guys, uh, heavy lifters, <laughs> and uh, very consistent people. You know, so I yeah. would see like the same bus driver that worked out there consistently for years when we were there yeah. was still there was when still I there. was there. <laughs> <laughs> looked a little older, but still as jacked, you know. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, I think that place really inspired a generation of uh, of young people to yeah. work out, and uh, you know, there was young, there was old. There and was, you, uh, you'd learn. I feel like we we were thrown into the wolves because like nobody would like people will help you if you need it, but like there, like you had to either go with the flow or, yeah. or you wouldn't make it, you know. And and we learned like the hard way. Uh, which maybe sometimes was a little too intense, but at least we did it. And, and and now, you know, like I remember that place so fondly, even though I didn't know most of the time what I was doing. Now, after obviously studying and working that for so long, um, I wish I knew the things I know now back yeah. then. And we they have many like more <laughs> machines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, exactly. I remember they had the, this thing called a seated donkey press. So you would literally go behind and it was a calf machine and I was in love with that machine. I would go like, if I was going four or five times a week, three times I was starting on the donkey on press. The, all all yeah. the time, yeah, yeah, And then people would be like, man, you have sick calves. Yeah, and that's like, why. It's genetics, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm fucking <laughs> lifting on that donkey press. Fuck, I wish I, knew, I would have known that. My my, my calves are kind of small. So yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, we'll, 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 we'll figure it out. Figure out a way. Um, so when you started this uh, this uh, training journey, and you know, you had your experience, I had mine. Uh, what was it that you found the most difficult? Like, uh, was it motivation? Was it certain exercises? Was it the fact that we were surrounded with these big, ginormous bodybuilders? Or uh, I think it was more maybe finding the time uh, to do, uh, you know. To go work out, yeah. Motivation, I had no problem because I was very self motivated, and uh, really enjoyed the the feeling mm -hmm. of going. Really enjoyed the camaraderie that you felt there, yeah. and really enjoyed uh, the after feeling. Obviously, uh, so motivation wasn't a problem for me. It was maybe more discipline yeah. because I was uh, working in restaurants at the time and I still work in restaurants now it's uh sometimes you get swept away with uh, with a night sometimes you get swept away with uh with drinking and yeah, with yeah. partying and then you know you skip a workout because you have you don't have the energy or you're too hungover so maybe it was um, a little bit of that like yeah putting it into your schedule to always uh, yeah. yeah but I think that kept kept me really uh, level headed Okay. In in let's say the restaurant game because a lot of people uh, in that industry suffer from you know alcoholism, uh, addiction to drugs, um, really lack of sleeping, poor eating. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to really take a different approach uh, into that industry and also influence people in that industry and say like, hey, there's a different way to to go about your business if mm. you're going to wor be working late nights if you're going to be working long hours if you're going to be surrounded by alcohol drugs uh you know so many different yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. temptations no, it, it, it makes sense because a lot of the people because through you and other friends we've known a lot of uh, restaurant and bar people and they always seem to burn out right like they yeah. do it for one two five years maybe and but you've been in there forever yeah. and you still keep fit healthy exactly. and 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 still do a good job there i know i i go to the to your restaurant and i enjoy uh, mm -hmm. the experience so uh yeah there is a different way to do it and of that's, course that's uh what you can show everybody yeah and i think uh like a lot of uh, the clients that i have at the gym are like 80 percent uh restaurant people restaurant, you know? yeah, so yeah. restaurant people that really uh, have similar schedules i have an understanding of uh, what they do for a living yeah uh, how many hours they stand uh you know i know right away with some of them with their voices so if they have like a <laughs> uh, i'm like you drank last night they're like no nah, I'm like yeah, yeah you fucking yeah. drank last night they're like how do you know i'm like your voice is much deeper than usual you know and i and i know <laughs> and i recognize yeah, yeah. or like your eyes look all puffy you didn't yeah. sleep enough or something is really off you know so so i can call them out because i know because i do you've what, been what, there right? exactly. yeah, yeah. i do what they do so yeah uh, 
but uh, definitely uh, trying to have the healthy approach and work in that industry is uh, you know maybe not as common as alcoholism and, and drug addiction yeah, is yeah, there. Yeah, no, so. I know. Well, yeah. I wish more people followed your lead because, uh, like I said, I have many friends in the in that industry and, like, they don't have healthy um, habits. Yeah. I'll tell them to come see you, so they'll be go. good. Speaking of that, you still work there, but you also work with, with us at DNA Fitness uh, as a trainer. Uh, what was it that made you kind of say, like, oh, I want to make this uh, career path. I want to be, like, a trainer. Well, um, several things, but one of the main things was many years ago, um, someone approached me, someone from the restaurant world, and said, uh, listen, I'm also an actor on the side, and uh, this production company wants me to be uh, super jacked for a role, or at least have abs, visu yeah. visual abs, and more chest and more arms and so on. So I want to pay you to work out with me. So you'll be my training partner, but I'm going to pay you, but the production company is going to pay you. Yeah. So I was trying to wrap my head around like the idea of like, uh, okay, so you're telling me that you're going to pay me four to five times a week for, for me to work <laughs> out, for me to get in shape, and you're going to give me money for this. So I was like, I think I'm on to something. This is too good to be true. Yeah. I'm, I'm on to something here because already it was like a, like a, a passion to work out and it was easy let's say for yeah. me because we've been doing it for over 10 years already and then it was like uh so now someone is going to give me 60 to 80 dollars mm. a day to work out and i was like okay this is easy this is fun this is not uh difficult for me at all because mm -hmm. i'm already gonna, You're gonna do it anyway exactly yeah. <laughs> so it's just uh getting paid to do it and then um, that kind of uh, snowballed into uh, me uh, doing classes. Um, I was replacing a friend once who was going on a honeymoon, and he says, you need to replace me for three weeks. I have uh, these classes that I do. It's like mostly uh, high-intensity classes. Can you do them? I was like, I don't normally do them, but you know, I'll get out uh, of my comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, exactly. Do so I started doing them for one week, two week, three week. And then the person came back and then the company that had hired me to replace was like, why don't you stay on board? We really like your energy and your vibe and we don't so like your friends <laughs> anymore so much. So you stole your friend's job. Pretty much. Uh, I, did, I didn't steal it. it <laughs> the, he pretty much lost it. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because I kind of understood or had an understanding of who I was dealing with. You know, it was like office people, nine yeah. to five people, people that were not, uh, you know, they're not uh, going to go to the Olympics. They're not yeah, going to, yeah, yeah. they want to have a moment in their day where they could, uh, you know, truly unwind, go back to the office, be more okay. productive, uh, and also be in shape at the same time. So yeah. there, there was another moment there where the people were like, uh, instead of instructing us, why don't you do the class with us? Okay. Then I was like, wait a minute, you want me to do a 45-minute class and you're going to pay me $50 to do this class and I'm going to be all sweaty and drenched at the end of the class. And I said, it'll be a great way to kind of see the, the level of difficulty of the class. So if I do the class, you and can if do I it. find yeah, it yeah. difficult, yeah, exactly. then these people must be really struggling. Now, did they ask you to do the, the class without a shirt on? Uh, no, oh, but we okay. did go outside <laughs> several times, but I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm I think thinking some women, maybe they'll be like, Oh, let's have maybe. them. You know? <laughs> but uh, I think we passed that stage of like taking off our shirts, uh, many, many years ago. <laughs> maybe not you with your sleeveless today, but, uh, sleeveless all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like definitely past, uh, taking off, uh, my shirt and, uh, well, listen then. So you, so you, um, you, you stole the job. And then was this the same guy that you stole a girlfriend from, or no, not, not the same no, guy, not the same, same guy. Okay. Not the, it was a different guy. Uh, but after that, I I was kind of like um, because exercising and working out was always been a passion of mine. So yeah. it's like it's uh, something that I love to do, something that I love to you know study, something that I love to uh, learn about and try. I'm always like in the you know. Uh, 
I'm going to be my own, let's say, um, guinea pig oh, yeah. in, of, of many ways. So I'm going to try something on myself. If it works, then yes. we go. Or yeah. if it's difficult, I'll adjust with every person that I have. So for me, the goal was uh, really to... Um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. It happens um, all the time. So you uh, years of uh, mar marijuana usage <laughs> yeah, does sure. that to you. That, um, that's another to thing too. Like when you when you said like, what uh, pushed you to work out? Or I think replacing uh, drug use, yeah. marijuana, smoking marijuana, like replacing that with working out was definitely something that that <laughs> I did on a personal <laughs> level. Where I was like, well, I can't uh, smoke and then work out because it doesn't go together. Yeah. Um, I didn't like that because you were like my best customer. So, <laughs> 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 well, those is in the past. They can't hold it against you anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but just uh, so the um, the young Alex Tifo that's listening to us, uh, who's thinking of getting into fitness, uh, what would you say was your your struggle? Like, what was the most difficult part of that job as a trainer? Um, maybe it was uh, for me it was uh, deciding what I wanted to do or deciding what would make me most happy. Okay. So was it doing uh, restaurant work? Was it doing translation, what I studied in university? Or was it doing, um, you know, uh, working at a gym and so on? So when I approached you to work at uh, Energy Cardio, I was kind of like in a mindset that i wanted to shift from working to restaurants to working to the gym yeah um but i developed such a passion for the restaurant industry that i was like i, I can't leave this yeah um and at the same time working working for both i think for me personally and for my mind was a great way to just kind of like uh you know because i'm there are moments where i'm like my mind is going at 100 miles an hour and i'm like okay if i focus on two different things then my mind could be at ease yeah that was going to be one of my questions actually for because for as long as i've known you as long as we have the age to work you've never had only one job you no. always like have two or three and no. i go like is that out of like is he that much more energetic than i am is it because me one is like more than enough <laughs> Like uh, uh, this and, and talking on the mic is what I can do. The rest. Uh, so what is it that that makes you like want to do more or like uh, always being busy? You know, it, um, I've thought about it uh, on the drive here, and I was like, it's not even work. You know, yeah, that's that's yeah, how I true. have been looking at it for many years now, and how I've been um, just uh, getting myself up in the morning, getting myself. <coughs> to work at the gym, getting myself to work at night. It's, yeah. it's not even, it's not even work. It's fun for me. Yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm having fun every single day. Um, you know, like at the restaurant, if I play a song that I heard and that reminds me of something of my childhood, that's so much fun for me because yeah. I'm like, uh, sharing something that I, that I have. And then here you go. Uh, or coming to the gym and having someone uh, say like, Oh man, I feel so good after working out with you. Yes. You know, uh, this kind of like uh, gratitude that comes with doing this kind of work, I think uh, is really, really nice. So both jobs are to serve what I yeah. thought about, you know. So I really feel like uh, I enjoy doing that. I don't mind doing that. And also like people are willing to pay me for... <laughs> for for having fun, basically. For having fun, having exactly. Fun yeah, exactly. Jobs. Very yeah, much yeah. fun. So even the music element, the music element I bring to the gym too. Mm -hmm. The music element I bring to the restaurant. So that's something new that I've been developing through the years now is like really trying to focus on like, hey, let's try to set an energy. Let's try to set a tone. Let's try to set a vibe. Uh, so people are like, man, th that hour passed by really quick. Yeah. How come? Yeah. Well, because we played a little Kanye and we played a little Jay-Z yeah. and you were grooving to the to the deep house that I had played. Uh, so I really try to cater as much as possible to each individual and try to match like musically what they like to listen to. Like I, I started uh, training a DJ. So this DJ is like super deep house. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm like, what am I going to play for this guy? Because he's so musically like inclined. His father has a music school and I'm like, I got to play stuff that 
maybe he doesn't listen to every day, but that he could enjoy. So uh, I try to challenge myself in that way when I come because or else I get really, really bored. You know, yeah. my brain is like, uh, okay. <laughs> Do five more. Like, yeah, yeah, like, like I, we, I, I get that, but I always need to be like thinking about the next move or the next step or like, someone says, oh, I can't do this exercise perfect. Let's try to find an alternative right away. So in my head, it's like, a, you know, these old school uh, Rolodexes of like uh, phone numbers and stuff. Yeah. So that, that for me was always like uh, find a Rolodex of exercises that uh, yeah. you, can, you can have someone do. And there, I think we were always very good at that. Yeah, Me finding and, some, something yeah. that's going to be catered to that person that they will enjoy. and like uh, Or like, oh, you have this limited amount of space, now figure out yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that so we're very good at because yeah. we've got a small space, but we pack yeah. it up and we, we work well, yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and so so um, if I'm from what I'm gathering is you're going to come up and tell me that you're going to be a DJ in a month or so. So I mean, a, that, that would be job. That, that would be one of my like dream jobs, to be quite honest, is to do I that am. because I I really, really uh, love uh, music and I find, uh, you know, uh, music to be uh, very healing, very yeah. like, uh, you know, if you take it music to the next level of doing something, then it could have an effect on your brain and your mood and so on. So like yeah. I've been for many years doing like playing a game with my mind and like, okay, so you leave the house, you listen to the same song every single time you leave the house. Try that for a year and see what happens and see how your patterns change. Or if you're trying to change like certain patterns that are not very good for you or routines that are not very good for you, if you start with that song, then things will kind of develop from there, you know, so. Cool, uh, cool. Yeah, music. I get fed up of that song. But yeah, like exactly. <laughs> well, it has to be a pretty good song, right? Yeah. Or it has to be a song that really resonates with you. There's some yeah. words that the musician will say, or it's a message that you kind of create with the song, and it's like could be very empowering. It could be a very sad song. It could be a very happy song. But I always found that. Uh, <laughs> you know like if we play the rocky song at the gym you know people are gonna yeah, be fucking to, fired up that, so it's that's like one thing i cannot uh, not work out if i listen to a yeah. rocky song it's crazy yeah so people have really associated that so imagine making that association in your brain like that song gets me fucking fired up yeah. i'm ready to go yeah. or like the ending of a workout could be that song you know you won't, we won't put it at the beginning necessarily yeah but like that's how i want to think uh, about the relationship between music and everything that I do is it kind of it does like affect your mood. I was uh, uh, a lot because I was talking to this um, this client of mine who's a harp player. Okay, and she was telling me she's she's not at a professional level but pretty like <coughs> high level, and she knows a lot of pe people in the industry of uh, harp playing. Like I have no clue that <laughs> existed, but there is a thing, and she has this one friend who you can take an appointment with. And you'll go and she'll play the harp to like kind of calibrate you to okay. find your tuning. Uh. Apparently, there's sounds that each individual is like, like gets angry or like okay. uh, upset at. Like for me, it would be like an alarm going off like in the morning while mm -hmm. I'm sleeping. It, goes, it drives me crazy. And there's other ones that make you feel special. That's where, where um, you know, what's it called? ASMR, I think. You've heard of no, that? No. Like some dude will be scratching a table like this for okay. like an hour. And people listen to that. It calms them down or gets them excited, <laughs> gets them turned on, whatever. You go on Spotify, you put ASMR, you won't believe how many things really? there is. I tried something for sleeping because I struggle with sleep. And uh, it was this girl telling me to go to sleep there. But it didn't work for me. But like it's so many. Like And, and yeah, apparently, apparently you have to be fine-tuned to music. Mm. So something you should definitely, maybe I'll, I'll hook you up with that client to... Uh, you, you should go and get tuned out and see what it is, you know? I, I, yeah, <laughs> through the harp. I don't know. Apparently, they just play it and you just go into uh, a yeah, state I, of I, mind that's... Uh, I imagine it probably releases uh, some kind of uh, hormones of some yeah, sort. Right? Just like uh, exercise does too. Yeah, you know? I'm, sure, I'm sure it does. I'm sure somewhere it, it has to be because there, there's things that you... Why do you like that song so much? And yeah, why yeah. is there songs that, you know, you like but... Uh, I won't like or somebody mm. else and then there's songs that everybody likes you know it's just a massive hit what makes that so I'm sure there's a there's yeah, a link I've, somewhere I've seen like and tested like okay how does how do workouts go on heavy metal music how do workouts oh, go yeah, on see, like rock music yeah, how yeah. do workouts go on no music yeah so 
you know, I, I find the people will struggle with no music now. You know, it's like everyone has music. Everyone yeah. listens to music. When you're running, you listen to music. When you're working out, you listen to music. So it has become almost integral to the yeah. to the experience of working out, if you will, you know. I read some study that says that you're like 80% more per, uh, performant. Yeah, performant if, if you listen to something that, that yeah. motivates you. So maybe we could test and we'll do like a, a Eye of the Tiger on a loop for yeah. like the <laughs> whole day at the gym and see what happens. That's what we're going to get yelled at. <laughs> People will be like this song again, but okay, I'm ready to go, you know. So w when we mention songs like "Eye of the Tiger" and "Rocky," people can tell we'll tell we're pretty old. So we've been doing this for a long time now, twenty something year, years in. What keeps you motivated now to go and do squats and deadlifts and all these horrible exercises, which I do too, but like you know, not um, necessarily always looking forward to that. You know. I guess it's. Um Uh, it's a feeling now i think it's like i want to i want to look strong but mm -hmm. actually be strong okay so for me it's like uh, being uh, because as my let's say progression goes after five years 10 years 20 years the definitely the the workouts have changed the goals have changed Uh, but now at 44, it's like, you know, there has to be a kind of a longevity element. For me, one of the most basic things is like, hey, I want to feel good when I get out of bed. Yeah. In the morning, like, you know, yeah, like yeah. imagine some people are struggle with that. It's yeah. like you're, you're getting up in the morning and the first thing you feel is like It's pain. Oh, my <laughs> back hurts. My fucking like, I don't want to live that life. You know, yeah, I want to yeah, be yeah. like. Up in the morning, I'm like, I'm ready to Refresh, fucking go. I again. feel good. Um, so I think that kind of uh, is is the goal is just to feel good overall, to feel... Even with age, like still Even feel with good. age, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, I definitely don't want to think in my mind that, uh, that I've peaked in my, uh, you know... Um, career of uh, of uh, weightlifting and so on so i just want to constantly challenge myself every year uh like there was uh, many many years ago i said uh, okay so my birthday is in april so before april i'm gonna take three or four months like a bodybuilding competition mm -hmm. so when i reach my birthday i'm gonna be the fittest i am for that year yeah So I would take three, four months. I would even sign up to other gyms at this point just to stay motivated yeah. because I'm like, I'm paying. I got to go. Yeah. It's a beautiful gym, so I'm, I have to go work out. So I would take the three, four months, do it like a bodybuilding competition and say like, um, I'm at my peak when I reach my birthday. So when I'm 44, like I was this year, man, I'm feeling fucking good. You're feeling the best you've felt in a, exactly. in a so long time. At, yeah, like yeah. through the year, you know? So yeah. it's hard to maintain, let's say, uh, you know, uh, a certain body fat percentage throughout the year, a certain uh, level of strength throughout the year, a uh, certain weight also throughout the year. So mm. now I've realized and I've come to accept that, you know, this will fluctuate with, uh, with the year. Uh, There are going to be moments that are going to be very good. There are going to be moments that are going to be less good. Okay. But I don't want moments to be like very bad. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be over 200 pounds anymore. I, I don't want to be under 180 anymore because I feel too skinny. I want to be in the 180 to 190 range. I feel... That's where you feel good. You feel yeah, strong. I feel my yeah. most powerful there, you know, so... Um, yeah, well... well That's that's the motivation that keeps you going. Like 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 for me, it was it's always been like I, I don't want to um, be that old person who's just mad because like everything hurts and they can't move and whatever. And how many times have you, have you been told you don't look your age? Yeah, like exactly. it's incredible on yeah. a daily basis you get yeah. that. So whenever I think of all these squats and and preacher curls and all these things, it's like well they were worth something. 
also my son for some reason he's jacked and he's two so <laughs> i'm thinking maybe something happened where like i changed the genetics because you know my dad uh, not yeah. too not too jack not too tall there no. but you know maybe i changed the course of the family lineage I don't uh, know. <laughs> Maybe. I'll see. Uh, so that's your motivation. Great. I was scared for a second because you're going to say young women. but um, No, no. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's keeping up with, uh, just keeping up with life, I guess, and, yeah. and trying to, you know, uh, be able to work long hours and be able to be standing at the restaurant for long hours and, and be fine the next day. And, uh, you know, I see, like, some restaurant people, they come back the next day and they're like, oh, my back hurts. And, and I'm like, you're fucking 27 yeah. how does your back hurt like you're 25 like yeah. what, Maybe what else do you wrong do with me. Like, no but it's I, I like i see it and it's just like poor uh, eating habits yeah. uh you know uh, not enough drinking water uh just the most basic of things you know that through the years uh, i think we've kind of like it's just second nature now and like drink okay. a shit ton of water and we eat well relatively yeah, exactly. most of the the week you know yeah. try not to drink too much and do, yeah. Uh, yeah all right and uh, what about um with this having one two sometimes three jobs soon when you'll dj um how, how does that affect your 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 um like obviously you have a social life because of the uh, you're always with people there but like let's say your love life when you meet somebody, obviously they want to spend a lot of time with you and all that. Have you feel that it's like been in the way or can they? No, I, f I feel as you kind of get older, uh, you're willing to accept that rest is definitely one of the key components to very important having yeah. like, uh, you know, uh, hard workouts or being able to do hard workouts. Mm -hmm. So I feel now that because I don't work out as much, I have to make the workouts a little bit harder than normally. Okay. Because I would work out normally five to six days, 30 to 40 minutes, but not as intense as now. Okay. So now it's like two to three times, but much more harder, heavier lifts, yeah. bigger lifts. and. So you would save time and maybe have time for like yeah, definitely, uh, have yes. somebody in your yes, life. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. You're, d you're seeing somebody now? Yes, I am. Are you happy? Of course I am. This has been your, 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 your biggest uh, challenge uh, with me because I've, like, we've always been on the same, like, kind of path. Yeah. And then at one point I got all serious and did the kid thing and yeah, then the yeah, family yeah. thing, which I still have. I don't want to sound like <laughs> I don't have that. But, uh, a a and you kind of like, yeah, maybe not or whatever. So do you see now this being part of your life too or are you going to be just... Like, I don't know. I, I'm i very uh, happy with what I'm doing. Yeah, you seem uh, very happy. That's why Very I'm happy right with the person I'm with now. Very much in love with her. Fantastic. So I'm, I'm not like... Um, At least one person will listen to this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she will, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, one thing I realized, like, once I hit my 40s, there was a kind of a shift in, like, uh, you know... Um, People that work out in general, uh, it's like, why am I doing this? You know, yeah, when you're yeah. when you're young, you're like, okay, I'm a good. little bit vain. You yeah. know, I want to look good. I want to have bigger arms, and I want my chest to be big. And People you know, notice me exactly. Look at you me, know, yeah. so but then as I but then I was always like younger. I was like, I don't really like myself. Oh, yeah? So I wanted to change myself, obviously. And I, that I was when you were young, young. There. Yeah. So teenager I would, there. Teenager, but yeah. even later, okay. in the 20s and 30s. Okay. Like, I want to change myself. I want to make myself so strong that the voice that's like, uh, you're not good enough for you this, you're not good it. enough yeah. for that, mm. or you don't deserve uh, this and you don't deserve that, like that voice uh, was stronger when I was younger, but now that voice is like pretty much gone. And now... Past 40, I was like, you know what? Love yourself. And it's okay to love yourself. Mm. So this is something that I've come to terms with and that I've accepted. And uh, it's really kind of opened up, uh, you know, uh, different roads of like meeting, meeting Olivia that I'm with now and just mm. being like, 
okay, things are like fantastic and I feel good about being with someone. Whereas before it was like, you know, I don't feel good about myself. Yeah. Even if I'm that. doing all this working out and, and I look good from the exterior, but in the interior, you don't, not so yeah. good, you know? Yeah. So there had to be a lot of work done, uh, I think internally. And then for me to be thriving on all levels, you know? And all the maturity from the experiences you've had, because uh, like I said, I've known you my whole life and you seem to be like at peace. You were always, it's a bit surprising that you said, oh, I didn't like myself or, or, or anything, because it's always, it's always been like, uh, the guys always, uh, our friends were always, oh, Tifo's the fit guy, he looks good, he, he gets girls, he has a fun job and all that. And, and I've always seen that uh, yeah. with you too. And, uh, but it, it, it's crazy to think like, oh, inside himself still, there was of some course. like, you know, self-confidence issues and all of that. Yeah. But I remember telling you one time you asked me how, why was this the, the girl for you? Why did you decide to, and I go like, it, it's not about, yes, you'll find the right one. And, and they're very integral in the whole process, but you have to be ready for of it. Of course. And if you're not ready, because we've met not not to say anything but we've met a lot of girls in our lives and and they were not all bad some of them yeah but and but we weren't ready mm. i felt like that i wasn't ready i have some exes that i'm still friends with till this day because i think they're good people but i wasn't ready for that so the day i said i kind of like yeah this is what i want yeah it just happened magically which i kind of feel that it's happening for you and i'm very happy because and it's the biggest joy that i've ever had uh, i wish you have it too Yeah, yeah. I'm. I mean, I'm not like uh, pushing for kids because I'm. I'm yeah. not. Uh, I'm quite indifferent, you know. I, but um, I'm not in a rush for things, you know. Exactly. Like, uh, exactly. Like uh, in this industry and in in life in general, you know, people are just too rushed for. Well, in our lives, yeah. Everybody like. Everybody I wants meet, it uh, quick and yeah. Wants results quick. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Like, how long have you been training? My whole three life. years. Yeah. <laughs> really? I can only do two pull-ups. Well, it took me fucking 23 years to do <laughs> eight in a row, fuck, okay? So, <laughs> so like, yeah, bite your time, you know? Yeah. All right, and now, um, what do you see uh, in fitness? Because when I wanted to do this podcast, is going to be, obviously, fitness is going to be a huge part because that's what I do. That's what we do. Uh, it's a passion of mine. I still love it every day. Every day I wake up and I come to work and I go, I can still not believe that I'm getting paid to tell people what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing. Um, but in the future, what do you see for yourself? Like, uh, do you want to stay in the fitness industry or like, am I going to see you on stage with a mouse head or something and, and DJing? Or like I, I, really, I really don't know. I think I'm on a path of just uh, like uh, good vibes and... Like I've always said, uh, especially at the restaurant, it's like I'm I'm on a wave, and I'm just like surfing on this wave, and I'm gonna stay on the wave for as long as I can, as long until as I you enjoy until, it. And, yeah. Until, yeah, until I catch another wave. All right. So that's how I kind of perceive me and myself. I'm I don't like say like oh I'm gonna be a DJ and uh, you know maybe I meet someone and they say hey why don't you come be on the radio with me and I'll be like okay sick. Like I said, come be on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> we would make a good duo. I'm sure our first podcast would probably wouldn't be as great as our tenth podcast. Yeah, for yeah, sure. no, for sure, we're gonna have you on many times because uh, I, if you if you want, but I'm sure we have we've known each other for so long, and you have an interesting life, and there's so many layers that we haven't uncovered today. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure um, I'm sure we we can do a lot more. Uh, kind of winding down a bit here. Um, What would you say to the um, to the personal trainers or the people that want to become personal trainers and they're 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 starting, they're nervous, they're not sure, they maybe want to open their own gym or just you know go to door to door, whatever there is. Uh, what advice would you give them? I mean, I think our uh, um, road or in French cheminement was was great because we got to work with a lot of different people at a just a brand name gym yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, for me i still remember those days as being like hey we're gonna schedule you for eight hours but one of those hours is gonna be spent cleaning machines <laughs> and i was like i don't clean I'm, machines i'm not here to clean machines like 
the other yeah. shitty trainers are going to clean the machines. Yeah, if they I'm can't f- get clients. Exactly. Yeah. So I I would fill the fucking block of eight hours. Filled. I wouldn't even have lunch sometimes. I'd just be like, I'm just going to fucking go through all of these clients. Yeah, I'd rather be helping somebody out get, uh, and uh, working them out to get their goals and, you know, cleaning a fucking machine. Yeah, yeah. Th- for me, that was my, like, uh, personal goal is not to clean machines because I fucking despised it. <laughs> but I really loved the the variety of different meeting different people, uh, different age groups, different uh, problems. They wanted uh, different goals. So I think that really has to be one of the things that if somebody is starting new, it's like, hey, um, get into a box gym, uh, learn from other trainers, get as many people as you possibly can to train uh don't ask for too much money at the start because if you don't have the experience I you mean, gotta learn you can't exactly just, yeah, yeah, so yeah. and then once you're ready because there's gonna be a moment where you're gonna have that epiphany of like okay fuck this place yeah we can do this on our own like we had and we were yeah. like i still remember uh, being in our in my basement my bachelor one and a half had bachelor and bachelor pad and being like okay so let's fucking leave this place and let's do this on our own how are yeah. we gonna do this well let's find another place where we could pay rent, rent and yeah. uh fucking do it so um i think it took a lot of guts from us to just be like fuck the paycheck and we're gonna just earn on our yeah you're secure like income we just said like uh the hell with it and let's go yeah let's go try and 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 we had a lot of experience that there so i was never really worried also knock on wood we always want clients but i was never really worried about the the clients but it it was more all the the other thing how do you administrate payments and uh, yeah you know how do you schedule yourself without overbooking yourself Mm -hmm. because i've done that way too many times uh so yeah so well that's a very good advice um so now what's uh i said in the future you're gonna ride the wave and all that for now do you have anything that you want to promote say people should go check you out at garmanger well yeah for sure i mean uh <laughs> if people want to have uh, dinner reservations at garmanger then i could arrange uh, dinner reservations for sure with their own music too or uh, good music that you, yeah, you yeah, of course. provide yeah, yeah. yeah no. and then uh obviously if people want to come work out uh, the doors of dna are, are always open for for yes. new clients for for returning clients uh th- the beauty i think is we always see people come back so I think that's uh, really a testament to our, uh, let's say, energy and our uh, just who we are because yeah. people will always come back and you're like, fuck, I haven't seen this person in yeah, five years and, and now back. they're back. Like, so, um, and you know what? One thing I noticed too is that those people that, that, that come back they went somewhere else. Of course. Like you, you, you think like, oh, whatever. And I, I used to think before like, oh, they like it's bad, you know. They went somewhere else and they, they might find somebody better. I wasn't good enough or I'm whatever. I'm happy for them if they yeah, do. Yeah, I go, 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 go yeah, see and you'll come back. And we used to make jokes that they come back a lot more humble after that because yeah. they go like, you know what? These guys and girls were the best. So we're going to be like, you know, this is where I belong. So uh, thanks to all those clients. it's It's been a wonderful ride. So you want to close up with anything? Say anything? Uh, how about an inspirational quote that you think about before your workout? Ah, so for me, it, it's pretty straightforward, and it's a slogan, and it's Nike's slogan. So every morning, let's say I had clients very early. Let's say the worst client, not the worst, let's say the best clients I had, they wanted to work out at 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. So that means I got to wake up at 5 <laughs> or even 4.30 4 yeah. to get my day started. But I said, if I get my day started uh, like this, then the rest of the day will be will be great. Okay. But I always have to have the mindset of like, just do it. So like, there's always that voice of like, hey, uh, stay in bed, you're tired, or, oh, you have this, or you have that, or you didn't sleep enough, or, you know, there's so many excuses. So I've always adopted the, like, just do it and don't even think about anything else. So that's kind of the voice that takes over. So I think in anything, it's like, don't spend too much time with excuses. Uh, Don't uh, think you can't do it. 
Just fucking do it and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking, that's it. So we don't get sued for copyrights. It's just fucking do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, same as uh, DNA's logo. Just make it happen. Yeah, there you go. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So fucking no. get in the gym and do it. And we're here to help the whole way. So listen, it was great having you. I, I, I think this is going to be a fun project that uh, I'm embarking on. I hope I can uh, count on you for some cooperation yeah, if course. we need anything. But uh, yeah, I really like doing this. And uh, we're still looking for a name for the show, but it should okay. come soon. Right. I, I just am uh, 3D Danny. I'm 3D Danny. No, 3D Danny. I 3D. am 3D Danny. Okay, 3D Danny. What you know is what that? that is? Yeah. Danny. Yeah. Drip. Drip. Remember that. Okay. That's the new. That's okay. the new persona for the. Okay, I'm gonna take podcast. back the dead pool <laughs> that I gave you. Um, okay, dead pool. Remember that's drip. That drip. more help in there. <laughs> <laughs> I already fucked up the Deadpool. Fuck. Poor guy. It's okay. We'll we'll save him. He's gonna be there every podcast. Perfect. Anyways, Alex, it was great yes. seeing you. Well, what do you do? <laughs> Forty four years, and we can't get. We this don't even in. know what to do. Fuck. Oh my All god. All right. We're thank so you. Old. This was great, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see more content click right here for another exciting episode right here if you want to get in shape sign up for our online fitness app using the link in the description finally help support us by liking and subscribing and if you don't want to do none of that well at least keep making it happen